Hi guys, as you may have known, I learn a number of foreign languages and some of those languages are the Romance languages. So in this video, I'm just going to share with you the process flow that goes on in my mind when I come across words that I don't know and finding a way of remembering them. Now these words are in French and Italian. These phrases that you're looking at right now come from the same article that I was reading in two different languages. So the first language was French and the other was Italian. But the words of interest here are actually those ones that are underlined with a red line. Those are the words that I did not know and understand. And those are the words that we're going to be talking about in this short video. So as you can see that in French, we have lapide and then Italian, we have lapidato. So I did not know what these words mean. Okay. But at the same time, there was a part of my brain that got triggered, which is that there's a word in English that I already know that sounds like these two words. It's not the same, but it sounds similar. And that word is dilapidated. So what does the word dilapidated mean? According to my knowledge of English, dilapidated refers to anything that is worn down or in a state of ruin. And then I went on to Google to quickly check the actual definition or whether if my understanding of that word is 100%. So this is what I found. Do you notice what it says there? Of a building or an object in a state of disrepair or ruin as a result of age or neglect. The point that I'd like to draw your attention to is the fact that this definition starts by specifically mentioning a building out of all the other objects it specifically starts by saying of a building now keep that point in your mind because it's very very important for this video that the fact that this definition says of a building so just keep that in your mind now let's go back to the words that we're still trying to understand in italian and french so we have lapidere in French and then we have lapidato in Italian. And we have also just seen that dilapidated, the English word dilapidated refers to a building that is in a state of ruin. A building that is in a state of ruin. Okay. And then I took both these words and pasted them into Google Translate to find out what they mean. And then... This is what I found. Lapide and lapidato means stoned. Now, when you think about buildings, what is the main component of a building, traditionally speaking? It is a stone or a brick. Houses or buildings are traditionally built with stones or bricks. And when you think about it, you'll realize that this translation of stoned actually makes 100% sense. Dilapidated means a building that is in ruin. So in other words, it is without a stone because traditionally houses or buildings are built with stone. So dilapidated is a building that is without a stone. That doesn't quite make sense, but that's how I think of it. To try to make sense and draw a link between the English dilapidated and these words that I'm looking at right now. Now, putting all that together, it becomes very easy for me to register these words in my mind. Lapide, lapidato means stoned. Dilapidated means a house or building that is in a state of ruin. Now, this is the thought process that I go through to remember words, to try to remember words, specifically in Romance languages. When I learn other types of languages, I go through a bit of a different thought process. So, lapide, lapidato, stoned. How do I remember that? Dilapidated. House or building that is in a state of ruin. In other words, a building that is without a stone. That is a house without a bead. That is a house without a bead. Now, bead is a syllable which is a subset of a word that translates into stone. 
from the five Romans languages. I'll repeat that. Bid is a subset of a word that translates to stone when translating from the five Romans languages. Let's consider the two other languages that demonstrate what I just said. Here we have Portuguese and Spanish. And these phrases are the very same ones that we've looked at in Italian and French. So if you look at those words there, you'll notice that there is a bid and they mean the same thing as lapide and lapidato. But the fact that there's a bid there shows you that there is a stone that is implied somehow in this word. And just as a point of interest, the name pita means a stone or a rock. Do you now see the link between pita and bid that I've been talking about thus far? And then finally, as a point of interest, the Romanian there at the bottom is quite similar to the French and the Italian. Remember, the French was lapide, the Italian was lapidato. You will notice here that the Romanian is also quite similar to those two examples that we looked at. So everything that I've presented thus far sort of shows you the entire cycle that my thought process goes through when I run into a word in a Romance language that I don't understand and how I try to reconcile it with what I already know from the English. I hope this helps you somehow. Cheers!